Okay, on this section of the review, we're going we're gonna to go over the finish of these firearms. And I will say, I mean, I love my Remingtons, I love my Mossberg, but the Remington has a pitiful finish. Like this, this Express, this sort of, they call it rough bluing, it's sort of a phosphate. You can already see it starting to wear. This gun's only, what, you bought this six months ago, eight months ago? About a year ago. And its finish is already wore shiny in some spots. It's, um, you know, it's kind of, and it picks up rust. I mean, this, this finish is actually very poor. If it gets wet, it will rust in hours. So it doesn't take much. Now this gun, on the other hand, Mossberg does do a good job in, pu in putting the phosphate on their guns. Now they will finish, they will rub here, but you can expect that on any pump action. Because that pump is going to slide up and down. And their stuff does scratch, but it's, you know, it's a tactical firearm. You're going to beat it around, it's going to scratch. As long as you keep it oiled and take care of it, then it won't rust. The Benelli, on the other hand, is almost impervious to, to, um, the elements because it's got it's, it's sort of a blue phosphate I more of a powder coat finish on it but the only parts you have to worry about are the very sparse pieces of metal on it. the barrel the tube and of course the action bars and the bolt yeah if you keep it oiled it won't rust either everything else on the Benelli is made out of plastic well, plastic okay, sounds we're bad. We're going to go into sighting picture now. This is crucial because we, we've done a lot of shooting with these three weapons. We've done multiple different types of ammunition, lots of different slugs, lots of different shot, and lots of buckshot to determine the... Uh, we, have some pic we have some video of uh, footage that we'll be showing you of actual shot that we were doing on clay pigeons. And we, were also, we also have a segment on slugs which were two really important things. Buckshot's fairly, between all three guns, is fairly uniform. Uh, buckshot's buckshot, you know? It, you're not worried about patterning on that. You're gonna shoot it down a hallway at an intruder. It'll work. Now, uh, so going into the sighting picture, we'll start out with the, uh, with the Remington. Uh, once again, these are upgraded sights on this one, but this is the vent rib barrel. Um, let's see. You can see he's got some true glow sights on there. Rear sights green, front sights orange. Really awesome when you look down the barrel and put them together. Before. This is a vent rib barrel. It shot, um, it shot shot really well because it's a it's a bird gun. It's designed to be the the barrel is designed to throw shot properly, and it has. This one we have in here for our testing uh, today was the cylinder, cylinder Correct. bore. <coughs> Bringing it on par with the other two guns. Allowing it to shoot slugs. <coughs> but you had a full choke and you double your range. We have the um, Mossberg 590A1. It has a ghost ring sight system. It's got a, a winged aperture protector in it. And then it's got a adjustable aperture. The, I really think Mossberg did a good job on this sight. It's got... Um, it's not the, it's not, it's got horizontal lines, to, so you can, here, I'm having a hard time getting it, there we go. So you can um, adjust, I mean you have a steady point of aim, and they also added a, a fire orange front sight on it, which makes it very nice. I mean, it's visible in low light. You can Point see how nice that is. It's not the best ghost ring sight in the world. But it's pretty, it's pretty stout, and it's in, it's proven itself to be very versatile <coughs> in different types of shooting. It's um, it's it, a, it's a wider aperture, which gives it, you know, it gives you faster on target. But it does sacrifice some of your, um, some accuracy because it is a bigger. You're looking through a bigger hole. Not only are you looking in through a bigger hole, but your pin at the front is a, instead of a single dot, you've got a lot of. You've got a lot of up and down to choose from on your uh, on your pin. Now it's very easy to see, 
but it's a very large surface to put on target. So it did well in, in some instances and not so much in others. So we'll, we'll get to that in a minute though. Moving to the Supernova. Now the Supernova, I would say, has the best sights for various uses um, depending on you know, depending on your on what you want it to do. It did very poorly in shooting shot. However, it still targets with slugs. The Benelli did really well. It doesn't swing well. The sights are very nice, as you can see, two dots there, small ring. Coming up front, you've got protectors with dots on them to get to line up with the uh, dots in the back and a single dot in the center. Very, very uh, concise, very to the point. Easy to use. You can see if I line it up there, very, very useful when it comes to still targets with slugs. Now, that being said, you'll see some video in a second of, the, of this weapon performing extremely, not even extremely poorly, just awful in clay shooting because those sights don't swing well. If you have to move the gun uh, rapidly at a moving target that is moving, I don't know, what's the average speed of a clay? Doesn't, doesn't matter. Anyway, <coughs> shooting at a target like that, not so good. Human sized targets, A+. Plus. Next thing we'll go over is length of pull on these guns. My personal opinion is that the Remington has a very poor length of pull. It's almost a full inch longer than this Mossberg stock. Let's uh, let me on the other side of you. If you compare the the stocks from receiver to receiver, you almost got a full inch of difference between the two stocks. It makes this Remington very hard to shoulder. But it also gives the shooter this thick limb saver pad for the added recoil, the Super Magnum buckshot, and so forth. But it makes this gun a nightmare for short arm shooters or anybody who wants to bring it up real fast because it gets caught on clothing. Here, do that again so that we can. <coughs> wait, let's back out a little bit. Go ahead and shoulder your your weapon. See, it can get caught under your arm because it's so long, so you have to. You, you really have to bring it up and swing it. But it's a good gun for, on the for other starting other. Go ahead off and do at it. the shoulder. It has, has a shorter stock, which makes it very comfortable for shoulder. Going back to what he was saying earlier about the, the added recoil protection of the... the uh, this, this pad on here is fairly stiff as compared to the, the Remington pad. Very spongy. This is not so much. And I will tell you, the shorter the shorter stock, the smaller the uh, thinner recoil pad makes this Mossberg a man's gun. You really have to know. You really have to pay attention with this because <coughs> it'll smack you, especially with the three-inch mag rounds. Yeah. Thirdly, we're going to go to the uh, the Benelli. It does have a longer length of pull, but it's it's more generous because it's got this pistol grip. You know, it comes up easy. <coughs> it swings well. And the, the stock is also canted. If you put the stock, it is longer, but if you put the stock next to one of the, uh, one of the other guns, you notice that, there, that the stock of the, we'll use the Mossberg for instance, has kind of a slope <coughs> here that brings it down, but it's still in line with the barrel. It's still in a straight line with the barrel. The Benelli, on the other hand, if you look, the stock cants downward from the receiver, giving you uh, giving you that length of pull that is very comfortable and easy to and sometimes hard to swing, but because it's canted, allows you to bring it up quickly without it getting caught on your clothing. 